are totally doing that on purpose. You do not drink water. <laughs> I've never heard that in my life. <laughs> Only when I'm really thirsty. No. Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're going to be making sense of life through the Fablemans. It's a loosely biological film about... Biological? Steve. Did I say biological? I meant... <laughs> It's we late. should go to sleep. We should <laughs> go to bed. Sleep. I think we can do it. I think we'll do it. It'll just be a bit sloppy. A little sleepy, sloppy, oh, silly. So yeah, loosely a biographical film about Steven Spielberg's early years. Going through teenage and then like early college, pursuing trying to be a film director. Follows his life, family. Mostly focuses on his family and the dysfunction they're in. Like what got him interested in movies. And yeah. And then how he starts making movies mm -hmm. as a kid and just it kind of takes and he keeps doing that yeah. forever. His mother was very interesting. I'm still upset about the mom, I gotta say. Yeah. I am. Um... Yeah. I'd be upset for a while, I think. Is it fair to say she was a mess? I don't like calling people a mess, you no, know, because, heck, I'm a mess. <laughs> But I feel like she was very self-involved. Mm -hmm. Maybe she was neglected and kind of ignored by the husband who seemed to be more preoccupied with his work and with science and things, the other things that occupied him. Maybe he wasn't the most present husband, you know? I don't Partner. know. Yeah. He would watch her mm -hmm. play yeah. and literally yeah, be on the verge true. of tears. Yeah. I do that's, not think no, that really the cool. husband was not present. Like they said, and he, would, he worshipped her, really. Yeah, right? he yeah. worshipped her, like the kid says. And I feel like there is a chance that she had bigger dreams for herself, mm -hmm. because we later meet the uncle saying when she would go to visit, Mitzi was just going on about how she's going to be this great musician. And as far as the uncle was concerned, he felt that she was capable of becoming a concert musician. She could have played, you name it, she could have played there. And so there is this seeming loss of potential or a life that could have been lived. Yeah, and so she has those regrets. There was this distance in their marriage mm -hmm. because she felt unfulfilled. Yeah, it was devastating for me because he was clearly in love with mm -hmm. her. With every scene, it seemed like he really yeah. did love yeah. Did love her. But and he was oblivious to his, her unhappiness, though. Look at that when, he, when he kisses her and she's not into it, and then he picks her up, and then she is so dead inside while he's just smiling. Oh my god, you're so right. You know, you're so right. I, I remember. Yeah, no, she was. There were there were a lot of times that he refused to take a hint. It makes it so that nobody was the victim mm -hmm. in, in the end, yeah. I'll say. They both definitely did not tango well. Honestly, and I feel like that's where Sammy is like, you have no clue what's going on. Yeah. You are so focused on your life and yeah. you have, you're not seeing the reality. Yeah. I got a better job, so we move. Oh, you don't even care where you are. You get to go to work, and that could be in Iceland. You're working with your goddamn machines, so you get to be happy while the rest of us are miserable. Don't. Well, you, you're bleeding on the carpet. It's a rental house. Do you even notice how much we hate it here? A lot of times, kids can end up being mature for their age because they kind of have to pick up the slack. Mm -hmm. It's not because they were blessed. The universe <laughs> blessed them with this child who just kind of came out like a Swiss army knife, and oh my god, <laughs> we barely had to lift a finger raising this child. Not even believe yeah. this and, but, and, but and it's like he immediately feels like the need to protect her even after he's so upset with her. I mean, you know, of course, like, she's he's been raised by wolves. He yeah. has to, <laughs> yeah. Someone has to be a parent. Yeah. You know? oh my God. She doesn't comfort him enough. She really doesn't no. the whole time. Not yeah. even talking about, it's not about you. I yeah. recognize what I'm, the harm I'm causing. Mm -hmm. I recognize that it must have been devastating mm -hmm. for you, my child, yeah, to, to have see. seen yeah. your mother mm -hmm. canoodling with yeah. a man that wasn't papa. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of the times when kids are like Sam, it's because parents are dropping the ball all the time. We don't know the details of yeah. Benny and the husband, but... I just kind of felt like if Benny was indeed a friend, this man welcomed him into his home, mm -hmm. loved him like, you know, a brother. Yeah. The kids called him Uncle Benny. Yeah. Two people mm -hmm. that you love are yeah. hurting you. And neither of them can actually be an adult enough or a good enough person enough to talk to him about it. That was devastating for me to watch something like that. When you're in love with someone like, like the husband mm -hmm. is, and when you have your best friend, who you say is your best friend, yeah. doing that, I think it can be really hard to get yourself out of that situation. And then on top of that, you have kids. Yeah. You know, your entire life, the love of your life, 
it's it's really hard, mm-hmm. I think. All three of these people really were not making no. rational decisions, I think. Mm-hmm. There's this conception of family that he's so respectful of, being supportive of your kid. Okay, your kid is interested in mm-hmm. making movies. We're going to get you a camera. We're going to do all of these things for you. He'd be there, you know, rooting for the kid, mm-hmm. watching the movies, helping him make the movies. Yeah. Absolutely supportive mm-hmm. of this passion that Sammy has. But then at the same time, talks about it. Oh, well, you know, it's just a hobby. Yeah. I'm talking about you looking for work, looking for opportunities, Things that are real things. Yeah. I want to make movies, though. I mean something real. Not imaginary. Something someone can actually use. In some ways, it might be even more frustrating than a parent that just from the get-go doesn't support your passion. Because it's like, to a degree, he wants to help him out, but then once he's doing it, he's like, Ned doesn't actually take it seriously. And he's like, yeah, that's great and all, but like, I'm hoping that you'll change your mind, you'll grow out of that phase. You could afford to be a little encouraged. About what? About him making movies again. Well, I didn't say that. I'm just Maybe talking. he's moved on. On from what? He hasn't picked up his camera once since we got here. He'll be going to college in September. Maybe his feelings about it have changed. He's growing up. I'm enthusiastic about that. This mix of where the mother who is kind of too carefree and too about what makes her happy alone, she is the one that, you know, tells him at the end. Sammy, you do what your heart says you have to. Because you don't owe anyone your life. Not even me which is probably the little bit of good advice she does give, but then it's also kind of like, well, yeah, but you also take it to an extreme. And then there's the dad that they kind of both, both parents kind of were extremes in their own way. One was too much kind of, you could say by the book, where like traditionally you just get a good job and you keep following where the money is and you keep going for the promotions and you move wherever you have to, no matter how much disruption that causes. And then the mom is like, well, you follow your heart no matter how much disruption that causes. So yeah. they're both kind of following these things and not, and ignoring the damage that's being caused. I think you have something to say to me, Sammy. And if I'm right about that, then get it off your chest and say it to my face. I started therapy. It kind of felt like the dad was saying, Sammy, just bring it out. Bring yeah. up this thing that yeah. I ca- I don't have the that guts to bring. Yeah. And then the mother is starts singing, oh, hey, I started therapy. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. Again, who is the parent here? Yeah, exactly. And then the son is caught in the middle of the two parents. I uh, thought that was so unfair. Ridiculous, yeah. For you! No much you loved using it for your war pictures, so I figured you ought to have one of your own. It's, um, bon voyage, see you later, alligator. I believe in you, present from your Uncle Benny. Because it's for me? Also, Benny. None of the adults were adults there, you know? And he's trying to, like, chum up at the end, give them the... It's kind of like, I know I really uh, broke up yes, your family, but here's a camera. I was like, were we supposed to be to feel endeared to I don't to think Benny? so. I mean, at were times... Were we supposed think... to be endeared to Benny because he is the true love? I don't think so. I didn't take it. I mean, he's... He's funny because, and the point is that he's funny, and that's why she has a better rapport with him. Yeah. He's the one that's kind of more fun to be around. The dad is, is not really a, as... doesn't have the social skills. Think whatever bad things you want about me, kiddo, but you stop making movies. It'll break your mother's heart. You will break her heart. I mean it. She doesn't deserve that. Not from anybody. Least of all from you. If you stop uh, making yeah. movies, you're going to hurt your mom. Yeah, putting what? so much guilt and so much weight on this kid. <laughs> that is so crazy. Yeah, all the adults were manipulating the, They were the manipulating that poor kid. And then you make this kid feel responsible for the parents' feelings. Yeah. Kids are not responsible for the parents' feelings. <laughs> it's the other way around. You're supposed to be the security blanket, yeah. not the kids. <laughs> the uncle talks about art and loneliness and art will leave you lonely. Yeah. Right? What does he yeah. say? Yeah, it's like... Insert yeah. yeah. Art will give you crowns in heaven and laurels on earth, but it'll tear your heart out and leave you lonely. You'll be a shanda for your loved ones, an exile in the desert, a gypsy. The thing about that, right, I yeah. can totally understand. I really, I can identify with what the uncle is saying, except that I don't think it's limit. I don't think it's art. I think it's like passion yeah your, your your purpose the life your yeah drive. your purpose yeah. yeah whatever it is that that fuels you fire yeah. yeah it does not have to be art no. because sometimes when you're in a family there's just something about you that's just very distinct and sometimes your family is quite happy to keep trudging along <laughs> with with the tune and then you're just kind of like i feel like i just want to create a new tune and that doesn't have to be art it could be maybe everybody in the family are bread makers mm-hmm. and you just felt like i just feel like yeah 
I wanna, I wanna, I wanna make Nan. I wanna make Nan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? Exactly. And so I don't think it's necessarily just art. Mm -hmm. I think it's just sometimes it just happens. And what he says about the loneliness, mm -hmm. I felt it. Yeah. I felt what he what it was what he meant. Even if it's not art, mm -hmm. as long as you are different yeah, from and, your family and you wanna be true yeah, to to the exactly. to that difference. That's what he's saying, is like basically yeah. following like being your true self, not ignoring that that part of you, that yeah. authentic part that doesn't care if it's different or it's going to be hard it's going to be a you know it confuses everyone else that knows yeah. you why are you doing this mm -hmm. don't do that but you just can't help the, but follow it yeah listen and, to it. and when you do listen to that authentic part of you it is a very lonely place mm -hmm. when you think about sam's dad him trying to get sammy to go into engineering like mm -hmm. him there's this you know family likes the comfort of familiarity mm -hmm. similarity if my dad is an engineer then me being an engineer that's gonna be great because we have to, we're gonna have stuff to talk about we're gonna have this yeah. kinship between us yeah and that's that's a safe mm -hmm. it's comforting family is often quite scared of differences if your son is all of a sudden going in you know i'm gonna be like i don't know going tight into, rope walker yeah i'm gonna be a tight rope walker dad <laughs> what is that i can't relate yeah, how are we gonna to this thing? What are we yeah. gonna do? How are we gonna talk? Yeah. You know, now we're not gonna be. Are we gonna be able to? Are we gonna be close anymore? That's where it really does get lonely. If you're threatening to break out of the norm mm -hmm. that is your family, you don't have a support system because nobody wants you to break out of the norms. Yeah. They're quite comfortable mm -hmm. with how things are. That's a lonely place. You have to do it all alone. You have to yeah. fight like crazy for it. Sometimes you end up doing things like, "Oh, I'm gonna go to school," you know, mm -hmm. because like my parents want to do this and it will make them happy. But you're just—it's awful. It feels mm -hmm. like you're just going against every single pore inside your body. Mm -hmm. and it itches every single day. I'm not living my life. Yeah. You know that conversation he has, Sammy has with the dad. I don't want to disappoint you, and I promised that I'd stick it out, but two years is like forever, and I hate school. Like a lot. And I want to get work on a movie or a TV show, so I send out all those letters, but nobody ever writes back, and my life is just going by so fast, but it's not getting anywhere. <laughs> My life is just going by and nothing's happening. Exactly. Yeah. And your family doesn't understand this thing. Mm -hmm. And so that is a lonely place to be. finally do show the film of the mom and of course he edits out all the other parts so just you know makes her look really good does all this and then of course she's happy for a bit but he it, he doesn't feel anything it just makes him resentful because he's like oh that's great that you're all happy but like first of all i know the stuff that i saw where you refuse to talk to me about to be a parent to me about it was yeah, the worst just, thing yeah. it was the film that the dad guilted him into doing yeah you have to do it don't be selfish your mom's <laughs> yeah. mom just died and then on top of that he has to cut clips out of the mom having an affair with uncle benny and then you have to watch this stuff over and over again yeah. it's traumatizing you get mm -hmm. the family you get that kind of family mm -hmm. wow the fact that he managed to sustain his passion with all of that stuff happening that says so much to me maybe part of it had to be just to survive that maybe like when the, the sister's like i don't understand how you can go back to your beach blanket movie after that we're different i guess Maybe that's his way of coping. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Who knows? Maybe it became an it's addiction that, for yeah. a little bit, right? Yeah, he's like, the uncle says we're junkies for art. We're junkies. Hmm? Art is our drug. Family, we love. But art, we have sugar for art. Why do people become junkies? You're fixing an imbalance. So maybe his filmmaking became that for a while. Lucky him that filmmaking was his drug mm -hmm. because there's also cocaine. Mm -hmm. That's true. And Hard to make films all on cocaine. Exactly. And and that's a, that's a tough time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. But there are still wounds there. Yep. You can't grow up in a family like that and not have things that you still need to get over. Yeah. The things that must have stuck with them. Like, I have a feeling that one part did definitely happen where uh, the guy's like, Did you tell anybody about me getting, um, upset? That would be a mistake. Our secret. Okay? Unless I make a movie about it, which I'm never, ever going to do. <laughs> yeah. He does. But yeah, the moral of the story is don't show your kids a scary movie. 
because it'll turn them into directors. That make the world very happy. Yeah. One <laughs> moment. Huh? Scary Movie is a 2000 American uh. slasher <laughs> Directed by Ken and Ivory Reigns. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that was. Oh, it's I don't know we had Siri. Bill Bowman, Jason Friedberg, and Aaron Seltzer. Would you like to hear more? No, thank you. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> that's some stuff that we thought of about the Fablemans. Mm -hmm. What would you guys think? Have you seen it? Let us know. Comments down below. Share your thoughts and our thoughts. Until <laughs> uh, next time. Thanks for watching. That's right.